Don't use Ritz crackers on top of your turkey. I told Chef about how my, my mom's famous recipe, she would take, you know, those leaves of Ritz crackers <laughs> and just smush them. You'd have all these like Ritz cracker little crumbles and a whole lot of butter. Obviously it tasted quite good, but it created the, what I call the trifecta, the sugar, salt, fat, dopamine effect. And just part of the reason why we, we overeat. It's like people look forward to that day. It's like, so they wake up, I'm going to eat all day. Like, and there's things you can do. Thanksgiving is coming up just a few weeks away. What are we going to talk about, Kara? Um, What's the main thing? Well, you know, one thing that I'd love to talk about, Chef, is the fact that um, it, it's certainly a day in the life that uh, most people plan on being uh, what I would call Thanksgiving full, which is a number 10 on that hunger scale. Yeah. Meaning you just, you know, you just feel... A day of feasting. <laughs> you just feel, ugh. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that... As, as that's coming up and as I'm, I'm meeting with some of my, my pretty kid on track guests that are prepping for the holiday, I think that's one of the things that that's the biggest fear is, um, you know, we could talk about and we'll talk about today how, how to make certain menu items for Thanksgiving healthier, yeah. but just the mere fact that it, it's, it's a day where Thanksgiving lasts probably, you know, for five hours and there's just food after food after food and um it's 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 snacking all day it seems like you know from hors d'oeuvres little deviled egg things it goes from and, morning to night yeah and, and and people are just you know usually people have their thanksgiving dinner at like the afternoon like right? four o'clock like, yeah like i know some people have it at like two o'clock so i'm like what are you, what are you? it's the lunch right? so and then anyway. we have to eat again at like four o'clock yeah, and yeah, then yeah, at yeah. six o'clock some people have to do that right you have to actually go have a thanksgiving you know maybe it's a family your reason you're having multiple thanksgiving dinners you know and everyone's eating at the same place so you know, it can be easy to overeat for sure. So there's definitely ways you can make healthier dishes that are traditional, whether it be the roasted turkey, uh, whether it be the, the cranberry, the soup potatoes, you know, the, the stuffing. You know, there's different little techniques you can do to make it much more healthy. Um, of course, everyone's going to want to eat a turkey on Thanksgiving. Yeah, let's so talk about the turkey. Most people are going to find that at the grocery store, you're going to find uh, just whole frozen turkeys, right? If you can ideally realize that the dark meat is something we would not recommend, yeah, we would really fatty. try to go for just the, the, the what we use here is bone in, skin on uh, turkey breast. And this way you're avoiding him or having to deal with the, the dark meat, right? And as you probably would say, I would say, why would we not use the dark meat, Kara? Tell us why. Well, one of the reasons why we don't use the dark meat is because the saturated fat content is much higher than the chicken breast. Yeah. And so um, what, what I think is actually nice about what you just said about doing um, the bone in skin on is that you definitely will get some fat from the skin. So it kind of seeps in a little bit, but then you take the skin off. So it, it, it will give you a little bit of juiciness, yet you're not eating the yeah. skin per se. Correct. I mean, absolutely, you will, dry the you will dry the roasted chicken out, you'll dry the roasted Cornish head out, you'll dry the roasted turkey out, whatever poultry you're roasting, you know, bone in, skin on, and all those are good too to use. Uh, there's other suggestions. Uh, don't use roasted duck, right? No, no duck. <laughs> but pheasants are good as something, right? I mean, as something we use here once in a while in the past. But, but anyway, roasting it with the skin on definitely keeps more moisture. It may add a trivial amount of fat, um, but it definitely adds a lot more moisture. It keeps that from breast from uh, overcooking and, and drying and, and out, drying out yep. for sure. Um, so with the bone in, you're keeping more, uh, getting a more flavor uh, in there, right? Um, <clears throat> if you just take a boneless, skinless turkey breast, you know, your best bet is probably sous veing it and trying to poach it in a sense where you're keeping it. That's probably, you know, one thing you could try doing. But I, in my house I, and, and here at Pritikin, we use bone in, skin on, turkey breast. If that's something you can't find, just use a whole, tur a whole turkey and, you know, maybe give just the dark meat and the skin to your dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> give the dog give it to the neighbors attack. you don't like. I yeah, give them <laughs> high cholesterol. But uh, in any case, you know, roasting with the skin on and the bone in gives it more flavor. And I would just recommend, like you said, taking the skin off before you eat it. Uh, always letting it cool down before you try to actually cut the whole thing off. If you want to actually cut the whole turkey breast off of the of the carcass, the bone, uh, letting it cool down to like 20, 30 minutes and then letting it, um, uh, you know, you're able to take the whole thing off and then taking the whole uh, breast, putting it on a cutting board and slicing, slicing. that. You know, and then you can just pour hot gravy over it, you know, and you're good. And, you, and, and, and the juices, just using pre-made, you know, uh, kitchen basics, imagine, kettle on fire, um, 
Pacific, collagen. You know, they all make good low sodium chicken broth, chicken stocks, and you know, or some you can even find as a low sodium turkey stock, but it's usually a bit harder. But you know, just use a chicken stock and you know, put some aromatics in the pan you're roasting the turkey in, right? I would say getting a big, you know, um, you know, tall kind of you know, at least like two or three inch side, you know, casserole roasting pan would be sufficient enough to throw some onions, peppers, carrots, celery, fresh thyme sprigs, yeah. maybe some roast, you know, whole garlic cloves, and, and roasting that with, with about like a quart of, of of chicken broth. Initially, wrapping the whole thing in foil, probably for about the first like ninety minutes, right. and then taking it off for the next for the last like you know an hour or so of cooking. Depending on how big the turkey is, and then you have a built-in you, built-in you, gravy. Yeah, you know, strain off all the stuff, and then you can thicken it in a, in a pot with a little bit of cornstarch, slurry. Mix cornstarch with some cold water. Let that stock come up to your 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 turkey au jus come up to a boil, and then thicken it a little bit with some cornstarch. Easy exactly. peasy. You know? exactly. Don't use a roux. Don't use like the. You don't need to use those little packet, yeah. those gravy packets that they sell because they're um, first of all they're loaded loaded with sodium, yeah. right? And and. Loaded. You don't even have to, you know, most people say to me, oh, I don't even add any salt to my food. I'm like, don't worry. It's already in there. You don't have to add it. So, you know, we have to be really mindful about the fact that when we buy any of these packaged foods um, to utilize in in our recipes, that um, most likely they're probably going to be loaded with sodium. So it's something that you really want to want to check out um, on that. And I just think anytime you could utilize the natural source of food, to create something else from it, um, yeah. repurposing it, and and by the way, I don't know if you realize this, but as the as the turkey is cooking, um, and you have the bone in, it's the the that is leaching into the broth, which is giving a whole lot of nutrients. I, I, would, I would hope I would know that. Yeah, yeah. I, and and flavor, I didn't know it was nutrient, but I guess the flavor. I was thinking flavor. Yes, yeah. because um, the bones have, have a lot of cooked. calcium in them, and. <laughs> You know, a lot of good nutrients that actually seep into the broth, and you're going to be consuming that okay. anyway. Okay. So nice. um, it's uh, really utilizing the whole entire turkey. Yeah, um, and, and and you could even, if you wanted to take that, that carcass, you could actually, you know, what, what they call you know fancy French terms called remoulage, where you're rewashing the, the oh, the you bones make a and, bone broth. You from can make the, you know, reutilizing that bone that. carcass, and then you know throwing some you know some more aromatics in there. You know, right. Little, Basic exactly. French mirepoix, onion, celery, carrots, you know, and, and make your own little extra turkey stock. You can use all the leftover, make turkey soups and stuff like that. You know, it makes a lot of flavor, you know, and, and you can always have leftovers, make sandwiches out of it, utilize it to make, you know, you know all different types of stuff. Make a turkey dip, a ca- turkey casserole, you know. Uh, don't use Ritz crackers on top of your turkey. Oh, yeah, I, told, <laughs> I, I, I told Chef about how my, my mom's famous recipe of, of the, uh, of the, of this stuffing, stuffing. Um, she would take. Ritz crackers, you know, those sleeves of Ritz crackers and just smush them. And then you'd have all these like Ritz cracker little crumbles and a whole lot of butter (laughs) and a whole lot of onions. And obviously it tasted quite good, but um, it created what I call the trifecta, the sugar, salt, fat, dopamine effect. And which is part of the reason why we we overeat uh, during Thanksgiving because we got that trifecta going on. It's like people look forward to that day. It's like, so they wake up, we're going to eat all day. (laughs) Again, there's things you can do. We on our website we have recipes that you can make healthy deviled eggs. You can go ahead and, and, and like, like I said, you know, do healthy roasted turkey. Heck, I mean, like the roasted sweet potatoes that we serve here every single day. It's 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 like you're eating the, the sweet potato casserole, just roasting them by themselves. You know, most people when they're making those sweet potato casseroles, um, they usually use those as canned yams. You know, like, like, ugh, you know. I'll tell you again, truth. canned, First, right? So adding the sodium, yeah, yeah, adding the tight. sugar, yep. yep. Usually they're packed in corn syrup. Sometimes they're in water, but yeah, either way, the quality is not very good. So I would just say no getting, skin. We got to keep the skin on there, right? Well, of the potatoes. I, I would say keep roasting them with the skin on, washing the sweet potato. Try to get like large, medium sized ones, washing it, and then wrapping it while it's still wet with aluminum foil, and then roasting it on a sheet tray. Uh, and also wrap the sheet tray with aluminum foil because as that sweet potato starts roasting, the sugars are caramelizing. It's oozing, yeah. They start oozing sugar out after about like, you know, maybe an hour or an hour and a half, you're just roasting it till the, till the sweet potato gets tender, right? Take it out of the foil. I would take the skin off of it for this you know, recipe to mash it up. To make it know. mash. Yeah, and and by sure. the way, nobody says that you have to put marshmallow Look, in the sweet potato. We have it's a sweet recipe, enough, We right? have a recipe here. It literally is just pureed roasted sweet potato and a little bit of low-fat cream cheese. You just puree the heck out of it in the blender. And that'll it make it nice like, and creamy. 
And and by the way, and I tell the guests, the guests this all the time when they um, they get a little bit, um, you know, they're they're all into no, I'm not eating any fat in my diet. I'm eradicating, you know, cardiovascular disease. And then we we do use in some of our recipes um, some light cream cheese. And um, what I really try to push forward is that a little bit goes a long way. So oh yeah, it's not like you have to like completely eliminate some of these foods, but just know that if you just use a little bit of it, it's going to, you know, go far and give you that creamy texture that you're looking for, but you don't have to add the entire tub. You can get the effect with, with just a small amount. A small spoonful, for sure. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, talking about the stuffing, you can make healthy stuffing. In my house, when I, when I make yeah, the stuffing. Yeah, let's, let's hear how you, you health know, up the stuffing. I, I, I have, uh, you know, really mastered this. You know, get like a good whole wheat bread. You know, try to look for one that's like a low sodium. Um, I know uh, Lon loves recommending the Ezekiel bread for, for people who are used to having like a regular white bread. That's a big, you know, a big kind of, it's a big sw- shift, right? And so you're going all the way from one extreme to another. So, you know, look for like a regular, like, like you know. Dave's bread, something yeah, like Dave's some, Killer. Some, some whole wheat bread, you know, just make sure the sodium and the sugar are low, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, per serving. Absolutely. Um, you can, you know, just chop that up, toast it in small cubes in the oven, get it where it's crunchy. What I would do is I'll saute and caramelize some onions and some celery, um, some garlic, Heck, you could even throw a little bit of out, like chopped up small apples into it. You know, it gives it a little bit more texture. It's sweet. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then add that, all that caramelization. Um, before, you know, if you want to add apples or not, I wouldn't puree them, but I would saute onions and celery and garlic and then puree that up where it's really caramelized and then puree it with a little bit of egg beaters. That way it helps it puree up smoother after it cools down and then incorporate that kind of wet mixture into your breadcrumb. Um, and then you get a little bit of like hot uh, uh, or a little bit of warm broth, kind of help, kind of th- you know dissolve everything, and then just bake that. You know, and so I use put, oh, okay. little little muffin cups too. Make little stuffing oh. stuffing muffins. We call them my stuffing hat. muffins. And this way, not only do you cook faster, there's good portion control. You use a muffin pan, spray it, scoop it, use a little ice cream scoop, and you push it out your stuffing mix in little muffin that's, pans. I love that. Cooks fast that way because you got all types of stuff going in and out of the oven. And these cooking like much faster right. than a big, like, like long big rectangular, thing. you know, uh, casserole pan would do. So, and and folks don't put, you know, even if you're cooking a whole turkey, don't put stuffing in the turkey. That's like, you know, first of all, what happens is you have to wind up cooking your turkey so long to get internally to where the actual stuffing is hot that you wind up overcooking the actual turkey itself. Because think about like, the whole cavity of the inside of the turkey, it's almost, imagine that all being full of meat. Well, you're filling it all with stuffing. That has to cook for a very long time for that stuffing to ever get hot. So don't do that. I, in my opinion, that's like, you know. Plus you have the 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 possibility of cross-contamination. Yeah, all day long. Um, so. so, you know, I guess that's one way to get rid of the fullness is if you get E. coli. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it all up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sick the next few days. That'll yeah, so. do it. Yeah, so Wouldn't I mean, fun, look, yeah, you know, avoid getting sick of the cross contamination, <laughs> and you know, make stuff from muffins. That's the way to go, my my opinion. You know, I add some fresh herbs, you know, thyme, rosemary, you know, stuff like that. It's a lot of flavor for sure. So, I mean, you know, there's there's you know, one, one time we all got um, years and years ago when I worked at a, a place, we all got um, turkeys, and my wife got a turkey, and I had a friend with me living with me at the time. Um, he was living with me for a couple of months, and then um, we all had three turkeys. We all worked together. And, and um, so we had three turkeys and we had like a turkey Thanksgiving uh, Battle trio. Of the turkeys. No, I, I cooked everything, but I had to do oh. it three different ways. It was like a pan seared one. And then we did a, 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 a roasted one. And then we did um, like, like a turkey soup out of one as well. We'd like used all that one whole carcass to make like a whole bunch of different, you know, things. So it was, it was like, we were like turkeyed out for like weeks, you know, like, what are we going to do with this turkey? Turkey forever. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I love, I love the, the muffin pan idea for the uh, stuffing. Um, another thing that is super popular in, in, in the Thanksgiving meal is, is the cranberry sauce. And one of the things that I actually like to do with my cranberry sauce is I put little pieces of um, tangerine in there. Okay. So how, yeah. how do you do Z- your, I, you know, your cranberry sauce? Zest of orange has a lot of like extra, th- you know, a little flavor dimension to some cranberry sauce. But you know, look, I mean, if you're getting like the canned cranberry and you're like, you know, jiggle, 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 like stuff out of the can, like, they sugar, have a, sugar, sugar. They had a new commercial that was quite catchy. I saw it the other day. It was the canned cranberry. It was, if you see it, you'll laugh. But anyway, um, it's, it, was, it, 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 it was something that you're looking at, and it's just like, I don't know how people eat this stuff. It's like this jiggly, like canned cranberry stuff. Look, I mean, that stuff has a lot of sugar, um, you know, and, and, and what Absolutely. I would recommend is getting frozen, seedless uh, cranberries, you know, and, and, and just cooking them in a pot, making a little compote out of it, how we make all of our 
like cherry compotes here. Do the same thing with, with frozen cranberries, right? Uh, just use some frozen cranberries, put them in a pot, a little bit of apple juice concentrate, a little tiny bit of water. Right, because those cranberries, by the way, I don't know if everybody knows this, but when you buy them frozen, they're unsweetened. So they, yeah. they don't they don't have any sugar added yeah, to them at all. Yeah, we're not talking about craisins here at all, no, for sure. Like, you know, and, and, and you know, using, you know, fresh cranberries can be hard to find sometimes, unless it's around the holidays, you probably might find them. Um, so just use just use frozen cranberries. Put it in a pot, a little bit of apple juice concentrate, um, put a lid on it, bring it up to a boil, uh, and then just keep cooking it down. And you can puree that up and make like a, uh, we, we like to make like a cranberry spread, like a little bit of like a, like a sauce out of it to kind of complement everything else. And we make it like a little, put it in a little ramekin and then kind of, you know, spread it out and things, you know. That's what I do. And, and I add a little touch of orange zest and when you blend it, makes it really nice. A little, yeah. So. Yeah, and actually you're adding that orange zest, by the way, um, whenever you're zesting anything, whether it's lemons or orange or oranges or anything like that, the zest has all those essential oils in them. And so it really gives you a great little boost of vitamin C in there and a really nice, strong flavor as opposed to just utilizing the juice. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm into the zesting. We're all about the zest. Look, you can take a lemon, a tangerine, whatever it may be, is take a microplane tool, get the microplane brand. That brand has become kind of synonymous with the actual tool itself. It's kind of like Q-tip or Band-Aid. But there's a brand called Microplane. And get that tool. And uh, you just put it on Amazon. There's a bunch of things that show up. Uh, but get that one and get the lime green one. So that way you remember your, your Pritikin recommendation, only zest citrus, not Parmesan cheese with this tool, right? Ah. Which it also is effective yeah. for. But, <laughs> but uh, it, it works for that, like hard cheeses. But you, know, you could use it for citrus zest. And put lemon, lime, tangerine in a bottle of water, put it into yogurt, put it into sour cream, put it into a chopped salad. Heck, you can put orange zest into some oatmeal and it really makes it very fragrant. It really nice, gives it a know? pop. The yeah. zest pops. It has no acidity. It has no calories. The zest of citrus is a way to go to add a lot of flavor to your food. Agreed. For sure. And and one thing we haven't mentioned yet, which is like the the principle of Pritikin is, and, and I was just, it, it just made me think because I was just talking with uh, one of my Pritikin on track guests yesterday she is the, the, the Thanksgiving planner every year. And um, need we not forget to front load with vegetables when we're doing this meal. So not only were we talking about ways to health up the turkey, the stuffing, the cranberry, the dessert and all that, but um, we talked a lot about um, let's serve a whole lot of roasted vegetables with that meal so that yeah we can you know fill ourselves up with these low calorie dense foods so that when we get to you know the stuffing and and the dessert and all of this stuff that you know what we're we're going to say hey you know what i feel good i don't need to eat so much of this i don't want to get to that number 10 thanksgiving full this year <laughs> um you know that that was actually her goal she's like yeah. i want i want to make sure that i enjoy the meal and I don't want to get to that number 10 on the hunger scale or what we call Thanksgiving full. In my cooking school, I just did now, we made a red jasmine rice salad, but we have things like wheat berry salads and things like, you know, whatever, black rice salad, like grain and vegetable based salads that are very filling and are very good things that you can make ahead of time. That way you're not in the kitchen the whole entire day, which you probably already are going to be, but not adding more to it. You know, meal prepping and prepping ahead of time could be a big time and game changer and time saver. Because, you know, this red jazz and rice can be something made two days in advance. This way, mix it up the day you're ready to serve it. Let all that dressing come together. Um, and, 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 and it's a good filling thing to kind of start front loading. Even if you're putting a little bit of carbohydrate with that, you know, it's half vegetables. You know, maybe doing right. cucumbers and right. tomatoes and peppers and carrots and radishes in that you know, grain salad. Or right. just, having, yeah. just having a salad by itself, right? Maybe you know, there's so many different kind of ways you can front load on those vegetables. You know, and because you're going to be snacking probably in the in, either, throughout the day. Inevitably, it's, you know, it's those, a long day. Try to eat those like roasted chickpeas we have here. You know, if you're going to make chips, you know, try to make your own little whole wheat tortilla chips. Make like a healthy dip, right? Like, don't be snacking on like brand name big bags of you know chips and pretzels and, and things like that, and peanuts because the sodium and, and you know it's just going to load you up. You know, so, right, right. A really good r rule of thumb, by the way, um, that that I that I personally tried to practice what I preach, but it, it is very common that when you go over somebody's house for a holiday, whether it's Thanksgiving or a party or a birthday or anything like that, the hors d'oeuvres, they, they, do, they do tend to have a chip and a dip, 
Yeah. Okay. There's no reason why, there's no rule that says with a dip, you have to have a chip. You, you could have a vegetable with a dip. It's, it's totally legal. It's totally okay. <laughs> and, and that's another thing that I impress upon. It's like what, when you are entertaining people and you are trying to maintain your, you know, your Pritikin uh, protocols that you learned when you were here, um, but you still want to have enjoyable food, you, you, you can still make the dips, you can make them healthier, but just serve them with, you know, if you want to do a little bit of crackers, because that's what people want, make sure you include the vegetable as well, because because it also gives um, other people an opportunity to have a choice. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when you get to where you're going, um, you know, it, there may not be things that 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 you're like, oh, I don't really want to eat that because I'm trying to maintain my health there. And then there are not opportunities. Um, so the other thing that's really helpful, too. I believe is that if, if you are not the one that is preparing the meal, but you are coming to the meal, just make sure that you say, well, what can I bring? And you bring something that you know that yeah. is that you like and that is good for you and that hopefully other people will enjoy too, so that you're ensured that you're not stuck with, oh my God, what, what I am I gonna, have, what am I gonna eat? Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. And, and front load on that, whatever you bring, maybe it's you're bringing some sort of casserole or bring some sort of side dish, whatever it is. There's lots of things you can bring with you that are going to, you know, hopefully, you know, let you fill up off of something that you know is going to be healthy and, and, and encourage people with suggestions. But, you know, people don't want to be lectured of how to, you no. know, e either. So you can no. always make healthy suggestions and make, you know, you know, comments. But <laughs> Or just just put it out there and offer it. And if they choose to eat it, they they do. If they don't, yeah. they don't. So it, it, it's not like you are... Um, you know, trying to push this on someone. Exactly. It, it's just, it's just available to you. And, and then here's, if they here's want another to, option for you as well. You know, here's what, I like to, option. what I like to do is try to, um, you know, if I could, if I ever can confine them at the grocery stores, buy like candy cane beets, jicama, purple radishes, watermelon radishes, instead of using just celery and carrot sticks, make put, those, put those out, make it pretty, make it fun. You know, that's what we use here at our coup de cups. And that way, people get excited about the vegetables. It looks pretty. And the more vegetables you know, that you're consuming, the more variety of colors, the more nutrient value you're going to intake as well. And that way, you're going to have all that you know, more vitamins you know, going into your body, not just, you know, not just you know, nutrients, but textures, flavors, you know, all different types of things that you're consuming. Yep. And one other tip I would say that I think is super helpful too is I think that when we think of Thanksgiving, we think that we are going to, it is our only meal of the day and we're going to overeat anyways. Um, so we go to Thanksgiving hungry. <laughs> Not a good idea. Don't go to Thanksgiving hungry. Have a little something before you go so that when you get there, um, you're not starving. And then you don't sit there and eat everything that's on the buffet um, table there. And uh, talk, yeah. talk more than you eat. Like hang out, hang out with your family, hang out with your friends, talk, enjoy the people. You don't have to stand right in front of where all the food is and just mindlessly go at it. Yeah. Well, Talking about the dinner part of Thanksgiving, we can certainly do all day. And, you know, people are thinking about what about the desserts? You know, oh, I'm yeah, going to desserts. bring how many desserts with me? How many desserts am I going to find there? You know, people are like, that's like thing. When I was a kid, I used to always like, hopefully there's like eight desserts that maybe everyone brought one, you know, and like I always had a sweet tooth when I was a kid. Of course, yeah. I still do. But I mean, you can make apple cobbler healthy. You can make, you know, a butterscotch pudding that's going to be very, you know, Thanksgiving and kind of ask it and very healthy. You can make pumpkin pie healthy. I mean, there's recipes on our website. You can make these, you know, Pritikin versions of these, you know, traditional classics in a much healthier way without sacrificing quality, taste, or 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 or, or, or something that you're actually going to enjoy. Yeah, actually, um, I I am not doing Thanksgiving this year, but I am obviously bringing things because I too want to make sure that I you know have something that I enjoy, especially for dessert. So I'm actually making the apple turnover, the pretty those, apple, those apple turnover for and dessert. You can, and you can bring them already pre-rolled and just bake them. Just you know, stick them in the you, oven so they'll there, be nice know? and hot. Yeah. Well, I like to do for those little apple turnovers, and if nobody knows what Kara's talking about, just cook the apple compote. We take a whole wheat tortilla, like a whole circular one, cut it into quarters, and then take that little apple filling, roll it up into the uh, in, 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 into the tortilla, and then bake it seam side uh, down to spray the sheet tray. Yeah. But also yeah. spraying the actual tortilla and dusting it with a little bit of Splenda and cinnamon gives a little extra sweetness and, oh, and, and so flavor. Oh, so So you feel like you're getting the sugar, but yeah. you're actually, you're not, yeah. So you're getting a little, you know, a nice That's little That's a nice little touch, touch, Jeff. Yeah. I like that touch. Yeah, but you could do the same thing with any other sort of, you know, maybe, maybe you want to do a peach, you know, turnover or want to do an apple, a blueberry turnover, you know. Right, whatever, whatever fruit, be. whatever yeah. fruit you, you, exactly. you enjoy. Exactly. 
Yeah, but definitely lots of vegetables too at Thanksgiving, right? More vegetables, the better. Roast them, grill them, saute them, you know, and try to get other vegetables, you know, roasting, you know, you know Brussels parsnips. sprouts, roasting parsnips, roasting broccoli and cauliflower, you know, and get colorful stuff. Try to get Romanesco. Try to get like purple cauliflower if you can find it, you know, make a good healthy soup. A white asparagus bisque is something that's going to be super flavorful and very kind of, you know, very creamy and nice to bring, you know, something you could bring with you as well, a soup. You know? Soup soup is a great idea. It's it's very watery. It's very fibrous. It's filling. It's satisfying. Um, I think yeah. And I don't. You know what? We don't typically do a soup for Thanksgiving, but I think it's a really good idea. I think I'm gonna Roast bring on butter. that new t- that you, tradition. You, you better make a soup now. I'll be asking you after. All right. <laughs> Roast the butter. You got it. I'm Roasted doing it. Roast butternut squash soups are always a simple classic you can do. You're very kind of you know Thanksgivingy kind of. Uh, that soup is to actually do. my favorite soup here. It's the butternut yeah. squash soup. I'll tell you what we do every every other Thursday. We serve Thanksgiving here. Essentially, we do roasted turkey every Thursday. Every other Thursday here, uh, with a with a it's a moho turkey. So it's a little our little Cuban Thanksgiving we ah, do every two weeks. You know, little Miami flair. Chef our sous chef uh, Victoria had made up a good recipe for that, and then we do roasted plantain mash. You know, so it's really really nice. Um, you know, and, and you know you can do what others any other sort of vegetable you want with that. Uh, but if you take plantains and roast them, like ripe plantains, and roast them with the skin on, uh, don't wrap them or anything. Just roast them with the skin on. Ones that are kind of yellow with the kind of mm-hmm. black spots. Mm-hmm. Plantains, not bananas. Um, you know, and 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 put some parchment paper on a sheet tray. Then put the plantains and roast them until you see start kind of to split open. Cool them down a little bit, and then just put them into the food processor. A little tiny dash of uh, you know low fat cream cheese kind of just gives it a little extra kind of creaminess. But let the vegetables shine, just like the, just like the roasted sweet potato. Roast them. You know, those you'd have to wrap in foil, uh, the sweet potatoes, but roast them with the skin on. And then, you know, just take the take that, you know, that skin off. Once it's roasted, the sugar is really caramelized. And pureeing it up gives it really smooth texture. That little extra pit of low-fat cream cheese gives a little extra richness to it. And it gives a little thickness to it, you know, so it's not so, so, right, so. A little more creamy feel. Correct, correct, correct. What about, could you do a little uh, fat free sour cream? As you can do fat free sour cream too, yes. Yeah, Instead absolutely. Of the cream cheese. Either, you know? either, either one of them. Either one of them will work, you know, but we're only putting a little tiny bit, really. It's only like a spoonful. For like, I'd say for per plantain, it's like maybe like a tablespoon at the, at the most, you know. And that's all you need, and, and it really creams it, it out. It really, really creams it out. You know, of course, you're probably going to do a few more plantains, just one. But you can make that as a roasted plantain soup as well, roasted plantain mash. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with you know with, with vegetables that aren't you're maybe you're so traditionally used to. I mean, get out of your comfort zone, right? I mean, try new things and experiment with different things. Whether it's a new vegetable, a new fruit, or a new grain, get out of your comfort zone and try new things right. for sure. And um, the last thing, the last thing I would say is, you know, there's always the uh, leftovers, and so. Some of these suggestions that you're giving, you know, if, if you're roasting the vegetable and you're having that at the holiday, then why not, you know, as a leftover, make the soup out of it or something. So, yeah. so you don't feel like you're eating the same thing day in and day out because you don't want to waste the leftovers. You could really just repurpose them. Take your roasted cauliflower, make a cauliflower soup or your butternut squash, make a butternut squash soup. My, um, my wife is like the queen of leftovers. She will figure out things. I'm like, so, so like. What did you do with all this stuff? I'm like, okay, like that's the kitchen I sink. I would have thought of that, but okay, like, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. If if we happen to, it's funny. I know this is like off topic, but in my house, if we, you know, we tend to Friday night is like Kara doesn't like to cook night, but every once in a while, really rainy or something like that, we don't want to go out. It's a uh, kitchen sink night. So whatever is left in the kitchen, I just kind of grab and try to create a meal out of it, like uh, which is sort like of your, sounds like what your wife is doing. I like your style. <laughs> Kitchen sink Friday. Kitchen sink Friday. Mm-hmm. Well, Friday's after Thursday, so then Thanksgiving's there on you, Thursday. There you have it. See, there you have it. It's already pre-planned. I always love talking to you about um, holidays, how to how to make foods healthier. Um, you just have a really great way of keeping the flavor in, but taking that fat, sugar, and sodium out. And so, um, thank you for you know helping me. I, I actually thought I was a pre- pretty decent healthy cook, but I have learned so many little tricks of the trade from you. And so um, I hope that everybody appreciates all these great ideas that Chef offers to us as well. well. Thank you. I appreciate you. I, I always enjoy talking to you. I always enjoy doing our podcast together and hopefully folks enjoy it as well. So yeah. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody coming up and um, feel free to check in um, some more on our website, the, the, the recipes that we have. And um, 
just enjoy yourself and be mindful, right? Happy Thanksgiving.